Welcome to Lab 3. Today we're going to be talking about microscopes and proteins. The protein part of this uh, lecture lab is a little bit connected with the lecture material, and so that'll help you review for the exam uh, because we'll be talking about proteins. Okay, so what you will be quizzed on this week, I thought I'd uh, try to be more descriptive about exactly what is going to be on the quiz, or at least a pretty good guide. Uh, obviously, you need to just do the whole assignment conscientiously, but uh, here's what you're going to be quizzed on. So um, just take a look at these. Uh, label the parts of the microscope, briefly describe their functions. Uh, we're going to learn what a low power and a high power uh, plan diagram is. Um, I will also give you a couple of demonstrations for what they are. You're going to have to briefly describe uh, how a slide can be viewed on a light microscope. Uh, describe protein structure, including the primary, blah, blah, blah. You can read that on your own. And then you're going to have to summarize the process of denaturation of proteins, uh, meaning you may have to uh, give an explanation of what exactly happens during denaturation of proteins. And again, what to turn in. So you're going to go to this website, and there'll be one other. You'll go to this website, and you're going to need to take a screenshot of the at view checklist and the through view checklist. I'll explain what those are because I'm going to I'm going to take you to this website and <clears throat> point out a few things. You're going to have to submit a low power plan diagram of the onion slide. Um, so low. I'll explain that later. Um, you, so you're going to do a drawing and you'll need to like take a picture of that drawing with your phone or with your camera and then paste that onto a Word document. Next, uh, a high power <coughs> drawing of three cells of the onion slide and a high power drawing of three cells of the cheek smear. Okay, well, that sounds like a weird one, doesn't it? Next, this is the second website that you will need to go to. You'll have to download this PPT and then click on the link or copy paste it into your browser. You're going to uh, watch a video. It's about five minutes long. And then you take a quiz and you submit the screenshot of your score. Now, this is this quiz is not the lab quiz. Okay, this is not the lab quiz. Uh, you can retake this quiz. Uh, so basically, I would expect that all of you would simply retake it as many times as you need to to get 100%. Um, there's only five multiple choice questions, and I do believe that it tells you which ones you got wrong. So, I mean, this is basically like go through the motions. Uh, I'd recommend you go through the motions conscientiously so that when that exam comes along that you're prepared for it. But, I mean, the, you can get 100% on this for sure. Um, when you finish the quiz, uh, it'll show you a slide like this, uh, and this is the thing that I want you to give me a screenshot of, all of this thing. You watch this video, and then you answer five questions, and uh, you need a minimum of four, but you can retake it as many times, so no, no biggie, and there's no time limit either on that one. Okay, so how to turn this assignment in? All of the things I just mentioned, copy-paste all of the pictures onto a single Word document and submit it on Blackboard. Uh, and again, if you're having troubles uh, with uh, how you submit things on Blackboard, as a last uh, option, you can email me the documents. It's just uh, my email. An inbox is not the way to organize these things, which is why Basically, every instructor asks students to submit it on Blackboard. But if nothing else, you know, you email it to me and you can at least say, see, I did get it done on time. See, um, can, I, can I please have credit for it? So that's, that's sort of a last option. Though. Please submit it on Blackboard. All right. So the first link you go to is going to take you to a slide. And right away, there's going to be a really annoying robot voice. And you can go ahead and take this tour, and it'll explain to you how to do everything. Um, but basically, again, it's just sort of like go around and try to click click on things. So like this one, you got to click from the off to the on button. Uh, this one is the rheostat, and it is involved in how much light is going to be projected out of uh, the 
the light emitter. <laughs> um, so more light, less light. And this is the uh, this is the diaphragm, and basically it's like a f-stop on a camera if you're a photography person. Anyway, this thing you can, um, it's a hole that allows the light that is coming up from the bottom. Uh, the, this hole can be made bigger or smaller, and you can play around with that actually, and you'll see what effect it has on the uh, subject that you are viewing. Let's see, next. Uh, this is, in fact, quite a practical lab to do. Practical meaning useful in if you ever have to use a microscope in a lab and if you take another class that you have to use a microscope. Uh, often students will say, Mr. McLeod, if there's nothing there, I can't see anything. Uh, and the first thing that you've really got to do with a microscope is uh, set the correct objective objective lens. Uh, lens, I nice spell lens, L-E-N-S. Um, you need to start with the low power, which is 4X. That's 4X right there. Uh, okay, another one is this thing. It needs this, this thing right here, these two guys. They need to be adjusted so that your both eyes are seeing in the same sort of uh, focus. And to do that, you have to click on this button. And don't worry about memorizing all my directions. You can absolutely figure this out by the trial and error. I myself figured out by trial and error. I didn't learn this in university. I just found this online and uh, decided it is a useful experience for you guys. Uh, so you can just trial and error it. So one of the things you need to submit is um, this checklist. So the at view checklist. You can see that one, two, one, two, three, four, five of them have been checked. So the when I went through it, I had done five out of the six. This last one I had not done, and you can see that the specimen, that's a, I think the onion slide, has not been moved over a little bit because it, uh, uh, this, the onion slide, it needs to be moved to there. It needs to be moved to there. It hasn't been moved. You would move it by uh, by this thing right here that thing and also this thing two things okay what else um, the a uh, few few other things I guess I'll talk about S the start stage at the top is in position what does this mean uh, you would be adjusting this thing right here it's uh, the coarse focus this is the fine focus but the coarse focus you can lift the stage this is the stage you can lift it up and it actually goes upward towards these objective lenses and it is possible to lift it up so high that you will smash the objective lens into the thing that you're looking at and break something so that's a bad deal so that's why you want to start by adjusting the stage all the way up to the maximum height just to make sure that you're not going to do that and so then when you if I were to oh wait a minute no that's not the other the thing um, if I so I have already done that. I've uh, lifted the stage up to its maximum position, and I've also, um, but but I have not moved the thing I want to see over to the left. And again, trial and error, you're gonna figure this out. It's a pretty easy to use website. Over here, these are the four slides that you can choose from. This one is missing because I clicked on it, and then it goes pew and goes over to the microscope. Uh, to the stage. So um, I believe it's this one that's the cheek cell. You can click on them and it'll uh, highlight, a, a, it will um, show you a word describing what it is. Pretty easy. Uh, okay, I think I got a little off track here. What I wanted to say was often students will say to me and to any biology teacher that they cannot see anything in their microscope. And that is because they have accidentally tried to start on the 100x, and this is simply too zoomed in. It would be kind of like um, uh, using a super high-powered binoculars to look at something, and you haven't focused them at all, and it can be kind of hard to focus them. Anyway, you always start at low power. Start at 4x. Okay. Couple other things about microscopes. This is the ocular lens up here, and this one is usually 10x. So that's pretty standard. So this, there's a magnifier, magnification occurs in the ocular lens, 
it also occurs down here in the objective lens. And the, the objective lens can be adjusted from 4x to 10x, and then you can see the yellow one is 40, and then you just grab this wheel here to, uh, to move them. Uh, okay. So uh, when you go to this button over here, I've already pointed at the switch views button, what's gonna happen is it's gonna basically take you into the world of what would it look like if you were looking through the eyepieces, uh, the lenses here, and then you'll start to actually see something. Um, and then you'll probably have to adjust it with the fine focus, maybe the coarse focus. Usually at 4X, you'll start by focusing with a coarse focus, and then as you get into the higher powered lenses, you'll need to use the fine focus, and it describes some of the reasons for that. Anyway, once you have um, switched views, you will be, you'll see the through view checklist, the through view checklist, um, just as you see it now, and um, you'll need to just do a couple of things. Firstly, you'll need to put the object that you're looking at in the center of uh, your view, of the, cent the center of the view, and let's say you'll have to adjust the fine focus, uh, coarse focus, and if you do these, do the wrong things, it tells you not to do them, and it also explains why you don't do that. For example, why do you need to center the image? Well, at 4x, you need to have whatever it is you're looking at right, right exactly below and in the middle, because then when you go up to 10x, you're going to zoom in, and if it's not centered perfectly, you might zoom in on nothingness. You might zoom in, uh, for example, let's erase that. Uh, you might zoom in if you had kind of put your thing you're looking at right there, um, and you can see it on the side when you switch to 10x or 40x, um, you'll zoom in to that location right there, and your ob object that you want to see has magically disappeared. Again, got to center the image. So all these checklist things are really a very useful tool. It almost makes me think I'd like to have my students who are actually in a lab do this in the lab because they so often won't and they uh, don't know about all of these things, even if I've told them about them and they can't see anything. Okay, so uh, that is it for that one. Uh, this is the through view. So uh, notice I have managed to get all the things checked off, and you could take a screenshot of this, and that would be good job. You get, you're going to get credit for having all of these checked off. And if you have to, maybe then you finally figure out how to adjust the fine focus, and then you have all of these checked, right? And but maybe one of these is off. That's fine. That is okay. I just want to see that at some point you managed to get all of these checked and then at another point you got all of these up here checked. So this is the through view checklist. I need to see all of them checked. And then up here is the at view checklist. All of them need to be checked as well. This is a an onion root tip. And isn't it wonderful? This is also a low power uh, diagram. Or excuse me, a low power magnification. Notice you can't really see any cells. Okay, enough said about that. We're going to move on to the next uh, slide. This is the all the things you need to uh, memorize. Memorize? Uh, yeah, memorize. So let me cross out a few of these things here, though. Uh, let's see here. Uh, is there anything that I wanted to really cross out? Uh, the base, that's just so obvious. I don't, you, you don't need to know that's the base. It's the bottom part, duh. Um, the head of the microscope, sure, fine. Don't really need to know what that's called, but this is where you would grab the microscope if you're going to pick it up. Don't pick it up by the eye, the, the lenses here. You're going to break something. Uh, ocular lens, you definitely need to know that. The diopter adjustment, uh, you need to know that one. Uh, mechanical stage, if you just called it the stage, that is fine as well. The condenser, uh, and if you wanted to call that one another, just it's basically light adjustment. Um, I'm not super picky on all of them, and that's why I'm adding a few of these. So this is um, uh, where was it? Uh, this guy in there. That is, it's involved in light adjustment. It's a condenser, yeah, whatever. It's a light adjuster. Illumination, that's where the light comes from. Light source, you could call it a light source as well. Not going to be super picky. Um, and then 
of this one again is adjusting the light brightness adjustment. Stage control, this, these two knobs here cause the stage to move backwards, uh, forwards, and left, and right. And then these are coarse adjustment and fine adjustment. Absolutely need to know that this is the coarse adjustment. This means it makes really big adjustments to the focus. The fine focus is it makes very small and slower adjustments. Uh, da, 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 da. I misinformed you. Um, the head here is not where you would pick up the microscope. My apologies. It is in fact the frame or the arm, this, this part right here. Um, this is what you would pick it up by if you were going to carry it somewhere. And, uh, yep, light switch. That's it. All right. Great. Fun stuff. Biological drawings, both low and high power. So here is how you do drawings. You can use a pencil. That way you can erase it. You need to have a title uh, for what it is you drew. No shading. So you're not going to uh, draw the nucleus and then shade it in. All right. This is bad. This is good. Okay. Nucleus. Uh, <clears throat> clear, continuous lines. So if I was, again, drawing the nucleus uh, and I drew a nucleus like so. That um, is not good. Why? Because we are trying to communicate very precise structures. What's up with this line here? Did you mean to do that? Is there a thing coming off of the nucleus? You need to take your time, go slowly, and connect the lines. A little hard to do with a mouse. So there we go. That's, again, happy face. This frowny face. Bad. Drawings must be proportional. So, for example, <clears throat> if the nucleus, um, this is, let's take this as the real cell, and I realize I'm not doing a great job here. If that's the real cell, so this is real, and then your drawing of it, it looks something like this. So you managed to get the cell size about right, but then you drew this nucleus that is just really big, not proportional, frowny face. It needs to be about the same size, not perfect, about Label all the tissues that you can uh, or cells with a ruler line. That means a straight line. Um, if you can't label them, then you don't label anything. I'm not asking you to look up things that I have not told you about. Uh, label lines should not cross each other. So that's just a cleanliness, neatness thing. Write the magnification at the bottom of the drawing. So if you are viewing this at, on the 4x, well, if this is a single cell, you'd probably draw, be drawing at the 100x, but this is the 100x for the objective lens. <clears throat> so that is not the total magnification. It's 100x times 10x, because 10x is the magnification in the ocular lens or the eyepiece lens. Okay, so it would in fact be the magnification would be you'd write 1000 X. 100 times 10 is 1000. Great. So now two different kinds of drawings. High power is going to be when the objective is either at 100 or 100 plus. So 100 plus X is high power. Low, low power is just 4X objective lens. So 100, 100 plus, 100x plus high power for the high power drawings and then just 4x on the objective for low low power plan diagrams. Draw the tissues. So a line should trace the border between tissue types. I'm going to demonstrate that. It is okay to draw a representative portion of what you see as long as you include all the tissues. That means you don't have to draw, like spend 30 minutes drawing every single detail of what you've seen, especially if it is repetitive. Uh, you may use the high power to um, clarify your understanding of what you're drawing. If it's not that clear on the low power, you can zoom in with high power and then zoom back out. Um, so use the low power to make the actual drawing. High power, you are going to just draw individual cells, typically like two to four. Um, each, each cell should be one to two centimeters wide. Uh, remember, the point of, the magnifying, of, of magnification is to make it bigger. I see a lot of students will have, say, a page that is, or maybe a test question, and they have this much space to draw three cells, and they do this. 
What? What's up with that? I can't see anything. So basically tr use a decent amount. So if you were drawing three cells and this was a half a page, half a page, draw them pretty big. Okay, did, did a pretty good job of that. Oh, this is a funny looking cell. Okay. Okay, three cells. It also looks kind of like a cartoon horrified facial expression, but it's actually three cells. And I'd write, you know, like, uh, let's see, 1000 X, and I'd write a title, uh, whatever the title is. Draw the cell wall of plant cells. Um, so these are not plant cells. Plant cells are usually more square shaped, and that just means that, yeah, you want to uh, include the cell wall. If, if it is a plant. You're going to just add a second line there, uh, and you're going to have to forgive me. I'm drawing with like kind of a funny technological thing here. That is uh, bad. Don't want to do that. You want to be kind of a perfectionist in that way. Don't draw the nucleus as a solid blob. Again, no shading, right? No shading. Okay, so this is a low power plan diagram, and this is kind of a tough one. <clears throat> so Again, you don't need to draw every single detail here. Here, we have simply included um, a representative cross se uh, section of it. So we just drew this bit, and we have drawn it here. Now, the things that I would identify as different cells, and I don't get too intimidated by this, because I, um, this would I'd be asking you to draw something this complicated if we had actually looked at the structure of a plant uh, root. Oh, is that a root or a stem? I think that's a top. Oh, boy, I already forgot. Jeez, I think that's a stem. Um, cortex? Yeah, I think that's a stem. Anyway, oh yeah, it is a plant stem. Haha. <laughs> so anyway, um, you would be looking for different cell types here. So what you can see, if you look really carefully, is that the tent seems to be like some kind of different cell arrangement here. So you would draw that. I can definitely tell that there's... Um, uh, sort of a circular or grouping anyway of things there. So I would again draw that. I can see that there appears to be three layers. So something like that. Um, I'm not sure if I would have drawn this line there. And again, there's not one right way. Um, okay, I think I've kind of gotten enough of this through here. What is this line here? You know, that would be it kind of arbitrary, and you might decide not to draw that. It, there's not, this is not a, it's, it's a cross between science and art. There are no hard and fast rules for right and wrong here. So would you draw a line there? Um, I don't know. It kind of depends on your opinion. And here are some additional notes for you. I'll let you read those on your own. <clears throat> high power plan diagram, excuse me, high power diagram, not a plan diagram. These are easier than you think. Okay, easy. That's supposed to be an S. So if we drew these three cells, don't draw all of them. It's just a representative sample, so three or so. Um, what can I see here? Clearly, I can definitely see that there appears to be, and I don't even know what it is, but there appears to be a, a structure there and then another one here. Uh, hmm, okay, and then they seem to join, and then, oh, then they split apart again. I really don't know what that is. Honestly, I don't. Maybe it's a, another cell behind this cell. That could be it, I guess. Um, over here, this is uh, an example I downloaded from uh, uh, from the internet. They've just said that this is the cell wall. Huh, okay, I guess it's the cell wall. Um, and I suppose if I was looking at it, I would know that I got this tissue from a plant. Uh, let's see. So you definitely want to be drawing this line as well. Let's let me make one final point. This is, I think, fairly self-explanatory because I've got this example here. But do not color in the nucleus. Don't do that. All of these things, like this sort of blob here, um, we're not going to be drawing those, okay? Uh, because, uh, well, I've decided not to in this example. Sometimes another person might say, "Yeah, I'm going to draw them," but we're we're reducing it to the simplest structures possible. Especially because you guys probably wouldn't be able to guess what that is. Frankly, I'm not sure I can either. Okay, <clears throat> plan diagram. All honest. In all honest, 
60. I do not know all of these tissues right here. I do know that this is an uh, ovum or, or an oocyte. Oh, it says it right there. Uh, an oocyte or an egg cell. Is it in a Homo sapien? I do not know that either. So a plan diagram, kind of like the overall layout of all of this stuff here. So I'm going to I'm going to do this a little faster because I know you probably don't want to spend all day watching, but I'm also going to not rush too much. Okay, so I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to say there's the nucleus, then about, about that far away is the next outer layer of the cell. <clears throat> then, okay, there's that pink layer. Uh, Uh, got it. Now, you would not draw a whole bunch of lines like that in your drawing, okay? We're not doing, we're, we're only uh, showing the major tissue or, uh, arrangements. Okay, so I uh, have got the, the nucleus, the cytoplasm, whatever that pink stuff is, and then there's one more, and this one's going to connect it to the outer, uh, or to the to the larger structure surrounding it. Oh boy, this is hard, isn't it? Okay, uh huh, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, oh, I'm getting in a hurry. See, it? see how I'm hurrying and it's getting worse? Okay, so notice my lines are pretty well connected. I'm not uh, drawing things like this uh, as a circle. That's not a circle because there's those funny hairs, there's this funny X structure there. That's not good. All right, now I notice there's kind of something going on here, so I'm going to draw that as well. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so just a side note, if you're kind of sitting through one of these uh, labs that I'm asking you to do and you're thinking, Jesus, this is really taking a long time. Remember, if you were actually in class, uh, you'd be in lab for three hours once a week. So uh, if you're getting it done in less than three hours, then you're right on target. Okay, next. There is, I think, another layer I can see here and then another layer that I can see there. So I'm going to draw them. And it looks like they go all the way around. All, all the way around. Yeah. All the, yeah, 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 I think so. And sometimes it's uh, two students will not always draw the same one. Two PhDs, the, the smartest type in the world will not always draw the same one so um, don't be too hard on yourself thinking that you're you know you're supposed to do this perfectly All right so there should be let's see one two three about four and I've got one two three so one more okay all right so I don't know if nothing else then this diagram should at least tell you that I am suffering with you here um, that this last one I'm not doing a good job because uh, this line is really not very similar to how, how it is here. It's pretty straight. Uh, pretty straight. All righty then. So there we go. There's a plan diagram. And uh, I can label some of these. So I would use a ruler. I don't have a ruler on this software, so I can't do that. But your label line would just stop right at the thing you're labeling. That is the nucleus. Pretty sure that's a nucleus. That's gonna be the cell membrane, and then uh, this whole shebang out here is. Uh, this is the uh, zona pellucida. Ah, boy, this other stuff. If I thought longer, I could remember it, but I wanted to kind of give you an honest uh, showing of what you do when you're not familiar with that many things. If you were drawing this, I would expect that you could guess that this thing right here is the nucleus. Uh, I would, I think you'd probably be able to guess that, but other than that, I wouldn't expect anything. High power diagram. If I was doing this as a student <clears throat> and I was looking at it, and I think, oh boy, what is all this stuff? By the way, I'm going to be much nicer. You're going to see things that are easier, I would say. And if you're uncertain, email me, and I know what you're drawing, and I'll help you. Or you can put it on the discussion board. So um, I'm going to draw three of these cells, and 
here we go. I'm going to draw uh, this one uh, and that one and that one. Okay, so this one is bigger. I think there's a border about there. And I don't really know where that membrane ends. I'm just going to not do that. So this is kind of what I'm going to try to draw, I think. Okay, so remember, make it big. Okay, pretty good. And that... Uh, well, you know, it kind of looks like it goes in there and then there and doesn't connect. It doesn't look like I can't see anything. What's what's up? What's going on there? I don't know. So I'm not drawing anything. But I do see a border here. Oops. I'm sorry. And this next cell beside it is quite a lot thinner. So I'm going to do that. And uh, let's draw those nuclei now. This one's pretty circular. And then the next one's more oval. Oof, not a great oval. Again, you want to do this with a pencil so you can erase it, right? I'll just model that once for you, okay? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. Uh, am I missing anything? Am I making any mistakes? Let's see here. Um, this line here, boy, that is really a tough one. Um, if I could erase this, this... I have to erase the whole line, so I'm not going to, but it looks like this actually more kind of curves. It's not really a hard right angle there. All right, and then one more cell. God, it looks kind of like it's going like that, doesn't it? Like that's the cell membrane. So again, I'm trying to be honest with you here and just showing you that, yeah, I'm not really sure exactly what to draw here either. So maybe like that, because... Uh, this stuff uh, kind of looks like the cell membrane's going in there, and that maybe that's another cell behind it. So then I went draw that. Okay. Uh, all right. And then there's another nucleus. Now, do you need to label all three nuclei? No, you don't. No. Cool. Yes. So this is pretty good. Um, if I had not fixed this kind of debacle here, then that would definitely be a point deduction. Uh, all right. So there's some uh, good examples, and then I've shown you kind of how myself bumbling through it. Uh, I don't expect perfection. The kinds of things that I would be a bit uh, peeved at. It, peeved? That's not the right word. Um, where you'd lose points is if you drew every single one of these cells, okay? You don't need to do that. If you drew every one, you'd lose points for that even though it's more work. That's just not how we do it. Uh, next, you would lose points if you started coloring in the nucleus. You'd lose points if you started kind of adding this artistic detail like so. Um, we're not doing that because um, that is, you know, I'm not really sure why it is that scientists have decided that they don't draw things like that, but um, it's just sort of at, by convention, they don't. So don't start shading in the cytoplasm in any way. Okay, so uh, that is it. Make sure you let me know if you have any questions about this.